Welcome everyone, episode 279 of Aussie Tech Heads. I'm Glenn and I'm joined tonight once again by Eric Franco and William Tomkinson. Hello, we're all and Eri. <laughs> Well, well, thank you, uh, Gwen. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> How, you evening, How you going, Will? I don't know, I'm wondering. <laughs> All right. Uh, what's happening? Yes, thanks for joining us on the uh, podcast in, in iTunes. You can see us live as we do the show, live.thesecrethub.com. Uh, and uh, check us on the youtube.com forward slash the secret hub. We're coming to you tonight, 1st of March, first day of autumn. Uh, 2012, the footy's back, which is good to see. I hope everyone's joined up to the footy comp. I know some of it, some of you have, but I'm not sure if you can still join up. I think you can if you miss the first round. You might be able to still win the weekly prizes. Undoubtedly, you're going to win the big prize at the end because you go into the big comp with other 30 other thousand people. Uh, but the big prize, 200k, you got to be in it to win it. Uh, then that's through the sports bet, obviously. So have a look at the web page if you want more information. Interested in the footy tip and comp? The AFL, AFL one starts fairly soon. I'm not sure what time. What day? Probably another three weeks away, but if you're into AFL, get into that. Uh, what else have we got going on? Um, I don't know. We've got a few stories tonight. We've got a couple of emails and a couple of, and a review from Garth. Good stuff. All right. We'll find out what everyone else has been doing. Uh, Will, what's been going on in your neck of the woods? Anything exciting? Uh, I have been having words with Optus, who refused to send me a modem, and now they've sent me three. Or right. Two. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So how uh, how is your uh, little Optus problem? Is? So what, well, what, ironically, what? since I rung them and complained and said it doesn't work and it's your fault, so fix it. And they go, yes, we'll send you out a modem. It'll only cost you fifty dollars. I went, um, no, <laughs> that defeats the purpose of sending me out a modem. Mm. So they sent me out a modem on Thursday. I got it on Monday. On Tuesday, they sent me a SMS saying that they're going to send me out a modem, and they gave me the tracking number. And when I looked at the tracking number today, it's being shipped to Brisbane now. So they've managed to send me two modems. Um, ironically, I haven't installed either of them, and my net's been perfect since Thursday. Now, so, what type of modem are they are they sending you? What type are you getting? I just, uh, they've only got one that's designed to work, although obviously not very well, on the high-speed cable. It's the Netgear so modem. So what have you got? What, you, what sort of speeds are you running tonight right now as we speak? Like, are you, have you fixed up or are you, are right, you limping? Right now, as we speak, um, given that I'm downloading Windows 8 in the background. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's always, that always helps. <laughs> Legally, through their you know, public preview, which we'll talk about later. Um, currently downloading at about 89 meg. Right. 90 meg down. Um, well, you're downloading at 90 meg down. Yeah. Um, well, that's my, even with everything that's going on, speed test is still giving me a 90 meg down. Oh, is so, your, oh yeah, so, yeah, right. Okay, yeah. Okay, so. Um, um, but and like, my upload is waiting. Right. <laughs> now. Uh, now I was uh, look. I'll get I'll get into maybe a possible fix for people out there who are having trouble with the Optus cable, and maybe even yourself. Point Will. nine up. Oh, that's not too bad. But um, but first of all, let's say good day to Eric uh, in a minute. There we go. How are you going, Eric? Hello, sir. Sorry to uh, <laughs> how dare you interrupt my cigarette. I oh, know. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, you two are having a good old chat. So I thought I must have a smoko. Have a bunger. And uh, what what's been happening down in your neck of the woods? Anything exciting? Uh, Rain, lots of rain. Oh, God, you guys have been just getting belted. <laughs> That's one word, yes. <laughs> I hear the, I hear the Warragamba Dam's full. It's full. They're going to be opening it tonight. For first um, first time in 14 years. Correct. Um, keep in mind, uh, when we moved into this house in 2003, uh, September 2003, so nine years this September, there was a drought on. Mm. And until... Um, 18 months ago, I had never, in that period of time, washed my car with a hose. Yeah, but right, right. Yeah. It's funny, isn't it? Because with all yeah. these, with all, um, with all this rain around, and we are getting a lot of rain up here as well. Uh, restrictions are still on. They still got water restrictions. They're opening up the dams left, right, and centre, letting all this water out. But still got water restrictions. I know There's Brisbane before the floods last year had massive water issues. You're on, you know, like code red. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you've still got water restrictions now. As far as I know. Well, didn't they, kept them, they... Did they realise that about, ooh, I don't know, just over 12 months ago, the place was, hello, flooded? I know. I know. And, and well, they, restrictions? They relaxed them for that for, I think, three or four months. They removed water restrictions. 
Um, we're not on water restrictions. We're on water. What do they call it? Um, rations. Oh, I got some weird name for it. Rations. Um, yeah. No, water it's... conservation scheme yeah. or something like that. Oh, the, oh, the greenies have got to you, have they? <laughs> <laughs> but look, Which like... isn't too bad. I mean, basically, you can do just about everything. You just can't hose your driveway. Um, you know, a few stupid things like that. You can wash your house with a pressure cleaner. You can pressure clean your driveway. You can wash your car on the grass. You can do all that sort of stuff. So it really is a pretty open-ended water restriction. But look, there's one sure, there's one sure fire way of uh, beating a drought or, or sending a drought packing, and it, it happened to us. And I'm pretty sure it's happened in New South Wales, and Eric can probably tell us if, it, if that's the case or not. But um, all you have to do, any other state around Australia, if, or any, in that case around the world, if you're suffering from a drought, build a desal plant. And, <laughs> and then, <laughs> Always the answer. Then, then, then the, the drought will go away, and then you're left with a billion dollar running per year running cost of this stupid big machinery plant thing that does nothing any good, especially the environment. Uh, the, you know, um, the good thing about you know, the desal plant was they built it uh, ju- they started building it just before the drought was over. Yeah, so right. when the drought was finished, yeah. oh, detail plant's working. Yeah, It hasn't stopped raining up here since, <laughs> since they built it. Look, I understand that the desal plant is a long-term solution, but you're right, it does cost a bucket loads of money to mm. run. Yeah, um, no, it's crazy. Yeah, 70, 75% of New South Wales is currently um, under underwater. <laughs> Jeez. Or, or, flood, or, or flood risk. Yeah, so, well, I remember at one point last year, I think, wasn't it like 85% of the entire of Australia was underwater? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, something like that. But anyway, it's good to see that the carbon tax has worked and it hasn't even come in yet. So <laughs> hooray for Julia. <laughs> hooray at last. Work. Let's not get started on that. That's not going to work. That's not a, that's not a, <laughs> that money's not going in anywhere towards helping the environment. It's going straight to the bloody, you know, it, that's the tax on the Robin Hood tax, that yeah. is. It's coming back to us. We're getting our first payment sometime uh, soon in March, aren't we? The, the Payment? C- what do you mean? I'll be. Pa- yeah, I, I might as well just give you a check. Yes, please. That that's fine. Well, that works too. <laughs> yeah. Can we just can we just swap it for favors? Hang on, let me get my check book. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, getting back it's to like, it's like the whole barter card thing on a national level. But yeah, but getting back to <laughs> getting back to more serious uh, things now. Now Will's had op- uh, Optus problems. Eric's had Optus problems for two days because he don't rang him up and told him to stick it. And I'm um, get charge. And I'm it, going to Budsman. I went, oh, okay. I've still got the modem. Hey, Will, I could have sent you my modem. What type of modem have you got, Eric? Optus modem. You, you know what? Yeah, Netgear. Netgear, is it? Well, anyway, let's, what I'm trying to get at is... is I've got Cisco. A Cis- now you've got a Cisco. No, no, you got a Netgear now. Yeah, but the Cisco doesn't the support... Big the one, but I've got the Cis- work, right? Cisco is the on Optus left with me. Right, right. Well, I'll tell I'll tell you the drum. Now I'll tell you the story. Now you, our mate Ozzy down in uh, I don't know where he is near Dandenong down there somewhere. Now he's had flopters for a little while, and he's been getting uh, sometimes speed on his Doxus three. You know, the plan is one hundred down, two up. Now he's been getting speeds of one point five down and worse. About, about I saw him. I saw him post a a fifty six k speed. Yes, yeah. yes. So look, he he's been uh, he's been going crazy, pulling his hair out and all this, and he's come up with a fix. This is a fix for those for you know, little young players out there that just might work. Now he's on the stand. Now they've apparently they've got these plans, these standard plans, and uh, which is um, what twenty down and half up, point five up. Yep. Now, that's your standard plan. Now for an extra five dollars, you can add an extra ten meg down, and and you can make it two meg up. So for an extra five bucks, you can have thirty down and two up. Now if you connect to that plan, and you're lucky enough, or you might want to request. A, the old Motorola SB5101 modem. Yes. You will achieve. Now this is this is Aussie's fix, and it's, it's working for him. It's it is working for him. You, it's been for a week now. Yes, you will achieve. Th- uh, he sent me a speed test of 31 down and 1.7 up. Now it's not 100 down and two up, but it's certainly uh, as I don't think you would notice even a difference between that and that, the the 100 down and two up. Yeah, he, um, and he's not paying the extra, so that's right. So it's costing well, him fifty. Yeah, 50. I mean, I'm paying, I'm paying twenty dollars extra per month to get the high speed. Yes. So you you go and try and get yourself one of these Motorola SB five one oh ones. I got one. And then stick it in and degrade, and see what happens. Ring him up. Although and... I have to admit, it's not my speed that's the problem. It's just my yeah. my uh, reliability. 
yet, but I, apparently this is this is Aussie's little fix. So he um he he's fixed this that he's been working on this for quite some time, and he's been tweeting everyone all around this place. So he, he's found it. He's found he's found it. So he you can follow and you can see tw- uh, Aussie's tweets if you're interested, and you can see his little argy bargy. Uh, his uh, Twitter is at uh, o z z y l a. So go and have a look at search him up on the twit on the Twitter and um. Yeah, or even send him a message, see how he goes, see what he says to you. But he's been having the same problems, but he seems to have fixed them. Eight, eight millisecond ping too, by the way, uh, to Melbourne, which is where he lives. So, um, yeah, good stuff. Good on you, Aussie. Thanks for that little bit of info. Now, uh, he did also have a little bit of info on the NBN, but we'll get to that later on. And so let, let's start off with something more, more serious. Eh? Let's have an email. I've got an email through the week from Miko. Now, Miko used to, well, obviously he still listens to the show. I haven't heard from him for a while. G'day, Miko. Now he's uh, he heard us talking about our hdtracks dot uh, com I think it was what was it hdtracks dot com where you get the high res uh, audio tracks. Now did you end up uh, get downloading any of those, Eric? Did you get into? No, oh, I, I didn't. I was listening to a couple, but I didn't um, download. Well, so he's uh, he's obviously right into the these HD tracks as well, and he's sent me another link with HD content, which looks like it might have a bit more of a variety. Now, this one is www.i-concerts.com. i-concerts.com. So, so he, he, said he recommends that one. So have a look at that one because obviously a recommendation is better than what one you just see in a, in a review. Oh, so you've got, you go to www.i-concerts.com. This is probably not the site you're looking for. You've attempted to reach, but instead you've actually reached a server identifying itself as infomaniac.ch. This is known to be a potentially harmful website. Oh, handy? I got on it straight away. <laughs> yeah, I'm on there straight away. I, I was on there earlier and didn't have a problem. It's just suddenly this side just popped up. Yeah, well, I've just logged in. So I'll, think, I'll just uh, grab the screen and we'll show you here what comes up. Looks like Whitney Pitney's the flavour of the month. Oh. Now my M key's not working. <laughs> oh, no. How are you going to send messages to MI5? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can you do you can't do like dot coms or anything now. That sucks. <laughs> so there you go. So it looks like yeah, there's some concerts and stuff on there. Uh, you know, you got your artists over here. Look like a, like a lot of artists. A to Z. So it looks like uh, from from first view, it looks like that there's a lot more content, and it's apparently all in uh, in uh, big high def sort of stuff. So there's playlists. There's uh, top YouTube. So have a look at that. There's obviously HD content and con- other concerts from uh, YouTube and concerts that you may not have been aware of. So have a look at that if you're interested. Thanks, Miko. Miko. Now, um, what else have we got going? Oh, get back off of that. All right. Where are we? Let's start with a new story, eh? Okay? Let's go with the big, the big news of the week. The big news is Windows 8. Now, you had a story about this, did you, Will? I think probably we all did, but uh, Will, you can have a bit of a bang on if you want. Um... No, I saw your story there, so I didn't bother actually. Okay, well, I'll okay, bring so. one up, but so we, basically, uh, well, yeah, I mean, I'm, I've downloaded the install, started downloading the uh, the files, so I'll install that over the next week and have so, a play. So what? So the go is uh, that Microsoft has released Win the uh, Windows 8 customer preview, and you can download that now from the Windows. Oh, there's a that, link in the show notes. It's pretty poxy. I don't like those tiles. It looks like. Play school. Mm. Yeah, I mean, have, you no can design. switch them off. Obviously, it's designed for a uh, you know touch screen, you know, click and you know touch and drag thing. It's the full surface experience, but I really can't see it working on a desktop. I but agree. might be surprised. It might be fine for a media center. Like it might be perfect, nice and big and easy to read. Yeah, you can um, you can uh, turn it off apparently. As you can Just yeah. press press the um, the oh. Microsoft key on your um, keyboard. Mm. Well, that's only handy if you've got a Microsoft keyboard. Correct. <laughs> no, no, but they're all keyboards have got Windows keys these days. No, no, no. I, I think you can um, you can create a shortcut. Like, you know, the, I think the shortcut to the Windows key is uh, Control Escape anyway. Right. So that it'll be, or, or just smash the keyboard against the computer. Yeah, just ra- <laughs> randomly press buttons. <laughs> So uh, in addition to releasing the consumer preview, Microsoft has also announced that the Windows Store, the operating system's app store for Metro. Metro is the, um, is that, is, is the layout thing with all the tiles, the Metro thing, that's that thing. Now, that's, uh, the Metro apps is now open for business in beta form. 
And uh, so it looks like everything's getting an app store and an app bloody thingy oh, here and there. A bad design, isn't it? Well, I'm not to, not to say that that's probably going to be the end design. It's only in beta. Uh, mate, it's Microsoft. They're not known for their um, yeah, for their yeah. aesthetics. Yeah. So uh, so the uh, yeah. So it's only ex exclusively exclusively available from within the consumer preview itself. For the duration of the preview's availability, these apps are free to try at no cost. But um, obviously, there's only going to be a limited number of apps. Uh, expect a more significant commercial marketplace. There we go. Once uh, launch, Windows 8 reaches final release. Now, if you're wondering if your machine's going to be able to run Windows 8, it has got a a um, a uh, does your machine run program on Windows 8 thing? That's right. <laughs> so, but what do you need? If you don't want to run the little program, you need uh, processor. It should run on most netbooks and PCs up to yeah. about two or two and a half years old. Yeah. Well, as long as you've got enough memory in your netbook, yeah, it'll be that easy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so processor one gigahertz or faster, and I would suggest get something faster. One <laughs> one gigabyte of RAM uh, for 32 bit or two gigs for 64 bit. Uh, hard disk space uh, 16 gig for 32 bit and 20 gig for a 64 bit version. You might want to up that a bit too. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. And DirectX 9 graphics device or higher. So there you go. So that, that's um, yeah. We I'm really surprised actually that. I mean, that spec's pretty much been the same since, what, Windows XP, more or less, launched with those pretty specs. Much, yeah, pretty much. Well, it hasn't mm. really you changed. Couldn't run, you couldn't run Vista on those specs. No, you no, no. Windows right. 7 so runs can, on that. Yeah, Windows 7, you can run it on those specs. Yeah, my little laptop beside me here is only a 750, um, and only 750, Celeron 750, and that's running Windows XP, uh, Windows 7. Yeah. Mm. My that's Netflix, my radio, uh, streaming, radio yeah. streaming rig, so... Yeah, two two gig of herps is my Windows Seven with uh, two gig of RAM, and that runs. It it did run the developer preview of um, Windows Eight, and I, I took it off. It didn't like it. Yeah, mm. right, right. Now, uh, so moving it moving across from Windows Eight. Look, look, I'm I'm going to get it, and Will's downloading it now. And look, you got to have a look at it. And obviously, when the when the proper version comes out, look, I'll upgrade. Um, you just need to you, if you're in the in the business, so to speak, well, you need to get the latest so you can obviously help people out when they get stuck. It's the same reason I have a multi-boot system sitting in the other room that boots Linux, Vista, uh, actually boots all the Windows from 95 through to Windows 7. It boots Linux, it boots um, Hackintosh system, mm. all mm. on the one system, so that when I do get those oddball errors, I can log into a, a specific system and do it. Um, you know, would I reckon, would I run all of those systems every day? No, mm. I mainly use Windows Seven with a couple of XP, like my netbook, and that's got XP on it still. Yep. Um, and I think that'll be the same. I think once Windows Eight comes out, Windows Seven will still be the standard for five mm. years. Well, I think Eric uh, made the point last week. I think that um, you'll probably for every second version of Windows is garbage. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So um, maybe. Well, there's not people buying it though. I mean, mm. Vista. The, what happened with Vista was a lot of people bought it, found out it was useless, and then didn't upgrade to Windows Seven because they thought it was going to be bad too. So it has that carryover effect as well. well it takes I, a couple of revisions to get people's confidence back, and then you screw them over and they don't come back. But like, on, <laughs> honest truth, I had no drama with Vista. Like, yes, you needed to spec your machine out a bit more, but look, I really had no dramas. I had no crashing. I had. I had no, no dramas. I I was using the machine the other day with Vista on it. It was it was okay. Yeah. Mine never ran. Too mine much. never ran fast enough to crash. Yeah. <laughs> Yours is still trying to boot up. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it never crashed. <laughs> it wasn't able to. You got to actually use it for it to crash. Now, but um, no, just I found Vista there was too much tweaking. Yeah. You got to do this. You got to do that, and then you really fine tuning it to get it to run. Mm. The way. Whereas Windows Seven. It was very much like a Mac system. It just works. Yeah. Mm. Out of the box. Just oh, win, win, Windows 7 is, is great. Is uh, the, yeah, it's Dan's yeah. pants. I love it. Yeah. It, but it, I mean, if, if Windows great. 8 does that, it should have a rel relatively decent consumer base straight up. Yeah. Well, we'll see. It, yeah. We'll see what happens. Oh, consumer base, so. definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And yeah. look, I reckon that they will release some tablets and they'll fly off the shelves with this Metro on it. It will. It mm. really will fly off the shelf. I don't mm. think that's going to be a problem. A little bit different on your desktops, maybe on your laptop. We'll see how it may be, you don't know, 50-50, but definitely on – If but the thing with their with their tablets, they've got to come out with something that looks half decent. Yeah, because if they come out with something that looks 
so utilitarian that mm. you know someone in the army would use because it's heavy duty and you, if you drop it, it won't smash. It's yeah. gonna look like a piece of pus. Mm. They've got to they've got to bring something out that's super stylish and people are gonna to want to have it because it's a beautiful looking thing. Yeah, that's right, and that's where and that's where I think uh, things are gonna be stepping up again on March the seventh. Great. When, when as Apple has confirmed the launch of the iPad three. So they've got a, they've got their little graphic ad out at the moment. Apple has sent out invitations to media outlets for the March seven event in San Francisco, confirming a long expected a long expected launch date for the next iPad. Uh, teasingly worded, we have something you really need to see and touch. So there you go. <laughs> the iP- I think and we have an iPad launch as well. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna wheel Steve Jobs out. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, dude. <laughs> Too soon. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Still too raw. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, now, the iPad 3 will become available for purchase in the US in mid-March uh, and is, is expected to launch in Europe and Japan sometime in April. No word on the Australian launch as yet. Uh, I'm guessing that's going to be in probably May. Yes. Are you going to get one, Eric? Uh, I don't think so. No, you have, you've got uh, one, it's haven't you? The iPad 1. Yeah, and you're happy with that? Yeah, it works fine. The whole house uses it. I just leave it on the coffee table. It's yeah. always plugged in, yep. and it's just on the coffee table. And sometimes, you know, you, you're watching a bit of TV or a, a show or something with football. I mean, you just go straight on, oh, what's that person's name again? You go straight on to the ID, IMDB and, you know, Wikipedia or something like that. Yep. And it stays there on the coffee table as a reference uh, device. Yeah, it's brilliant. yeah no, that, that, they're great. Now, uh, also coming out on, now there's a mystery device. Have you heard about this? The mystery accessory to join the iPad 3? A keyboard. Oh, no one knows. It's a mystery. Uh, reports that an accessory known only by its code name B82 will be launched alongside the iPad 3 and the new Apple TV uh, early next week, March the well, 7th. Well, better than the well, iPhone. The, the, the Apple TV is just a rumour, though. I think they'll bring out a new Apple TV, the puck, not the TV set. Right. I, I think they'll bring out a puck. Well, they've got... Um, well, this review here is, is suggesting that the Apple TV will be launched as well. Yeah, but um, not the TV set. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, 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 no. Probably on, not. Uh, you know what it is? It's, it's going to be the new equivalent of the uh, the Mighty Mouse. I don't know if you guys watched Talkback Tech. We talked about the new rumoured design of the iPhone 5. And uh, if you have a look at the pictures, it basically looks like somebody's put a screen on the bottom of a Mighty Mouse. No, I haven't. <laughs> Again, rumours. Rumours. We don't know for sure. Yeah, but, but anyway, I the, the, suspect that the Apple TV, the, you know, the little puck, the little Roku type box, will be um, 1080p because the current one is only 720, and the reason it'll be 1080p is because the new iPad 3 is rumoured to be 1080p as well. Mm, mm. Yeah, with some um, uh, Retina. Retina display. Yeah, that's right. So that's the seeing thing. And four, like your like your wife's phone. Yes. Yes. All right, and uh, yeah, so this B82, it's, it, it it isn't known if the B82 is designed to work with the iPad 3, uh, rumoured Apple TV or even both. Rumour suggests that the new Apple TV will have Bluetooth 4, so it can be a snazzy new remote. Another possibility is it might be a, a B82 as a game controller, so I think everyone's getting excited if it would be one of those, but uh, it's um, not, not likely. Uh, but then it also could be a smaller cable that Apple is rumoured to be making. Uh, so instead of the 30-pin connector, a smaller a smaller docking cable. Yeah, yeah. What are they going to do? Release a new iWii box station? <laughs> oh, I don't know what they're doing. You know, a gaming machine? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. what. don't know. I don't know. But anyway, March the 7th. When's that? That'll be next Thursday. Next week. Next Wednesday. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll be able to tell you all about it then. We'll, f- we'll find out what B82 is. There we go. Missing Apple mystery. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, does anyone else have any stories they want to uh, have a chat uh, about? Let's see. Mr. Smith, Eric Smith. <laughs> yes. He's sell- he has just uh, he's put in an, a uh, – where is where's my stories gone? He's put in a uh, – whatchamacallit, to sell. Oh, Eric he's- it's to sell $1.5 billion of Google shares. Yes, right, right. So 2.4 that, million shares of stock, currently worth nearly 1.5 billion. He's now the chairman. In, in, intends to stagger the sales of the stock over a one-year period. Why? Otherwise, otherwise, the stock will just plummet. We'll, we'll slump. We'll plum, yeah, we'll slump. <laughs> um, the company said Smith, 56, is trying to raise some money 
and diversify his investment portfolio. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. So that'd make him a nice, tidy little packet. But the funny thing is, right, it'll reduce his stake from 2.8% to 2.1%. So he's only selling 0.6% of a percent oh. of, of Google stock. Yeah. yeah. And he's for 1.5 billion. So you do the maths on that. If every if every point six percent was worth one point five, and he's got two point six percent, that is uh, times it by five. So he's worth about probably seven and a half billion, just in Google huh? stock. No, that all? Yeah, a lot of money, a lot of money. Uh, now, I see another story here, Eric, that you've got, uh, Mister Kim dot com. Yeah, speaking <laughs> of another uh, another uh, crazy. Now, look, I admit that sometimes that we think we need more than we do to survive. Really, two hundred and twenty thousand dollars a month to oh, is survive. That, is that a month? Are you joking? A that's a month, not a year. That's a month. But see, that's where he's wrong. He 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 he, he says two hundred twenty thousand to survive. That is yeah. not right. He if he might he should say something like he needs two hundred twenty thousand to maintain his style of living. Yes. But to survive, you don't need two hundred twenty thousand. Yeah. Well, that's that's two hundred and twenty thousand New Zealand, so that's one hundred and forty-three thousand Australian. Yeah. Oh, is it? Is they, oh, still, yeah. still, still a fair. <laughs> still. Uh, well, they convert it properly to Australian is twenty bucks. So <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. But did you see? He he actually went through and listed his reasons for this. No, I didn't see that. Go on, Will. What what what? what yeah, his... Look for that. Yeah, go go through what he spends in a month to in order to to uh, why he can justify this. I was looking for it the other day. We should mention as well that uh, his wife is also under investigation by the U.S. authorities for her involvement with the file sharing website as well. Um, but among the dot com and his wife's monthly costs, uh, I'll do the New Zealand figures because they sound better: twenty-four thousand for bodyguards, twenty-nine thousand for nannies, a butler, and a personal assistant. A, a month. A month. That's ridiculous. And nannies yeah. don't five, cost thirty thousand a month. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe five thousand dollars per well, month for fixed you, line phone charges. You know, you know, you know the type of nanny he's got, don't you? Nudge, nudge, <laughs> wink, wink. Also, maybe <laughs> also a masseuse. Oh, <laughs> happy ending that one. Okay, uh, um, eight and a half thousand dollars for gas and power. How much? A month. How <laughs> much? <laughs> and security. He's got more security than the president. Oh, um, he's a joke. I think six and a half thousand dollars to. To KimTool.com. <laughs> Six and a half thousand dollars per month for their four year old child's tutors. Oh, bullshit. Um, I want to apply for a job as a nanny and get paid $400,000 a year. <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice. And I don't the, know. The uh, Crown Prosecutor, Anne Tui, told the court that the request was unreasonable given the average annual income of a New Zealand household is $79,000 and it would almost immediately drain the couple's New Zealand bank account. He's, yeah. I was yeah I read it during the week and I thought that's ridiculous. He's you doing know, it tough. On, on a on a lavish lifestyle, you could get by on twenty thousand a month. You know, and yeah. that would be pretty. Oh, yeah. You'd be doing it pretty yeah. well. Yeah, um, <laughs> twenty thousand a month. Yeah, that's that, that's that's like twenty times more than I get. I was going to say that's <laughs> well forty times more than I get nearly. A month. Oh, hang on. Yeah. Not a week. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. That's that two hundred. Oh, at, look, that's oh, I'm over it. I'm over it. Now <laughs> let's see what else we got going here. Uh, Samsung, Samsung t- Galaxy Tab eight point nine four G has is launching in Australia today. Launched today, this week. It's all it's all out. Australia's hands up. Who's not what? Getting, not touching Android. Android. Yeah, I'll be getting one if I. Well, I, I would if I could. So what's I'll the soft one now? Is it um. What is it? Ice cream sandwich or um, yeah. polar bit scrotum? What is it? <laughs> it's uh, weighs <laughs> weighs 470 grams, 8.9 inch uh, footprint, making it a tad smaller than the more common 10 inch sizing of the iPad 2 or Galaxy Tab 10.1. Um, but it's also so they're going backwards, are they? Galaxy Tab 10.1 now they're launching at 8.9, so they're going backwards. But mm. also less compressed than a diminutive 7 inch tablet such as the BlackBerry Playbook. Blah 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 blah. No Sports. one buys a playbook. There's one person in the world that's got one. Gay book. Now, dual core 1.5 uh, gig. Somebody in our chat room's got one, I think. A 16 <laughs> gig. Uh, sorry about that. And 16. 
<laughs> 16 gig, uh, whatever's, 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 blah, blah, blah. Anyway, who cares? The uh, 8.9 4G is currently the only tablet that can natively access the uh, Telstra's 4G network. And we all know how fast that is because we had some speeds last week on the show. And uh, speeds uh, at Narang on the Gold Coast here on the 4G phone, 4G uh was it uh, Samsung Galaxy S2? We're getting smashing in. A, no, HTC, sorry. That HTC phone. Of course, that's the only one there. But the HTC, yeah, was uh, smashing it up at uh, 35 down and 15 up. It was crazy. Crazy speed. That is crazy. So um, that work gets congested. But even yeah. still, even if you can get, you know, four or five in either direction, that's more than enough because the yeah. device just won't be able to physically handle any more than that. Mm. If, if I got, you know, 10 up, 10 down, I'd be bloody happy. Oh, yeah, mm. hell yeah. It's, ru- it's running Android 3.2, uh, gingerbread 3.2, but confirmed by Telstra to be upgradable to ice cream sandwich in the future. The Galaxy Tab 8.9 4G is available today on plans starting at $29 a month and blah, 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 blah. You can get That's it. Not bad. Not bad. bucks a month. Bad. Yeah, outright yeah. for $720 for the 16 model and 32 gig outright for $840. You know, if anyone's got it that does plans for the iPads, is it just Vodafone? If Telstra did it, God, I tell you what, they'd sell out. If they did thirty dollars a month on an iPad. Oh mm. man, I don't understand. What's the? Why would you say is a big advantage? Why not just uh, tether your pad to the phone? Because mm. of battery constraints, uh, or, or it- uh, yeah, there's that, and you know, it's a bit of a pain in the ass. Well, you know, if you're in the car, right? Just say, and I say, hey, wifey, look up the map, see where we're going. Yeah. And I'll say, hang on a minute while I turn my hotspot on. While I'm driving, <laughs> well, see, my, I've got, wait till um, tonight, on no? my phone, I've got <laughs> on my phone, I've got a uh, app that as soon as I put my phone into the car dock, it automatically enables hotspot and stuff anyway. So, oh, all right. right, that's all right. Well, so then, it makes it easy when, when it you've would, got the the tablet that you want to use for GPS or whatever, it automatically hooks up once you jump in the uh, car. Yeah, that'll that'll work. Hmm. Yeah, because my yeah, mine's pl- my phone's plugged into the car as well, so it wouldn't hmm. drain the battery by tethering it if I'm in the car. Um, and if you're at home, well, let's face it, where are you normally? You're at home, in which case you use Wi-Fi. Mm. You're in the car, in which case you're, 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 you it's being charged it. while you're driving and it's charging at the same time. Or you're at the office, which you've got Wi-Fi and PowerPoint. So you'd and probably never run out of... Um, no. Spots. And even if you're at uh, Macca's, Hungry Jack's, KFC, Sizzler, they're all doing hotspots now, uh, Wi-Fi. <laughs> I noticed that uh, you've mentioned all the healthy places to eat, Will. Yeah. <laughs> Subway. So the only reason I mention them is because like, when you put in, you know, because I drive all day to deliver batteries and stuff, when you put in, um, you know, toilet facilities, they pretty much always just put you onto a Macca's or a KFC or a Hungry Jack's because they pretty much always have toilets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's, yeah, well Macca's so, has always, Macca's has been known for their hot, their hot spots for ages. Um, but slow as a wet week, but still, if you, it's better than mm-hmm. nothing. Yeah, yeah, true. Now, sticking with some Android here, Dropbox adds photo syncing for Android. So this is pretty big for, for you guys. Uh, Dropbox is launching a new version of their, of their desktop and Android clients that will automatically upload, automatically, yeah, upload your photos to your Dropbox account. Snap a few photos on your phone and without having to hook up any wires, blah, 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 it gets up into the cloud. Now, Dropbox is competing with Google Plus and Apple's iCloud, but the cross-platform Dropbox has a bigger installed base than both. So I think everyone here on the on the Aussie Tech Heads uses Dropbox. Yes. Yep. And, and that reminds me too, just quickly before I forget, I found an app the other day called Box. Same principle, except it's actually designed more so to run on uh, Android. Box, and box.net? Uh, no. Box.com. Box I think it's box.com. Um, and you can actually, if you sign up before the 23rd of March, you will receive a free 50 gig account. So it is, it so. is, uh, yeah, it is a 50 gig account, but it is limited to 100 meg files. So. Uh, no, it's if you sign up before March 23rd, it's limited to 500 meg files. 500? Yeah. Oh, I must have updated. I think it might have updated actually for that special. You're probably right. Yeah. Yeah. That's normally 100. You're right. Yeah. I'm editing 500 megs. I beg your pardon? No, I don't, I don't think I'd have anything in the upload that was 500 no. meg. Look, I know. No, um, my, my videos would be about it. Right. Yes. Yeah. Look, I, I've done, I had a, I got an account with SkyDrive. And I think what it's got 25 gig, but an upload of, of 50 meg, which is getting a mm. bit small because they sometimes you know you, you could upload. I couldn't upload a, a podcast or something mm. like that, you know. But um, but anyway, getting just quickly back to Dropbox, we'll finish the little droppy story off. 
is um, so Dropbox is offering 500 meg to users for their first automatic upload, which can be extended up to a total of three gig for extra storage of photos and videos. So it's not a lot of space, but it's it's, it's good for free. And up to up, updates to the desktop version of Dropbox on Windows and Mac mean the apps will now recognise when digital cameras are plugged into your PC, giving you the ability to upload right away to catch all your Dropbox image folders. You can find Dropbox on the Android market and iPhone users, uh, the app, this is the first time I've ever seen this, but iPhone app is coming soon. First time I've ever seen, normally the Android lags beyond, but there you go. There you it's go. been happening soon? a few of those style apps have actually been coming out i've noticed on android more recently yeah right. um like well, the box is android only at this point um so a few of them are i i think it's because it's easier to manipulate the software to do what you want to do yeah and uh, also just as a side note google hits eight hundred fifty thousand android daily activations 12 million tablets and three uh uh, uh admit admits the 300 million phones google's mobile lead Andy Rubin has revealed that Android phone and tablet activations 850,000 a day. Mm. That's crazy. It is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but don't forget, that's not necessarily unique. That's somebody's formatted the device and reactivated as well. So mm. it's it's only, I think, about 500,000 uniques. Yeah, you know, because the other 350,000 have to keep wiping their phones because it keeps bloody crashing. Well, not have to, but you, know, you <laughs> yeah. can. You know, unfortunately, it takes a few minutes. Unfortunately, the sad news with my mod is that I've got to take the battery out twice a week, and my camera app doesn't work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what's going you did on. well. Maybe it's the phone, eh? Maybe it's just the heart. Maybe I've just been stung yeah. like a it, bastard. The phone? With this. Pardon? You, you think you might be ready for another phone, Glenn? I'm hanging for October. October, and, mate. I just oh, pay well, a bloody contract. We'll go to CM7 then, eh? Or CM6 or whatever it is. We'll well, get the next one up. I might have to do. I might have to do something else. But uh, yeah, look, <laughs> look. I'll just wait for October. iPhone 5, 4G. Give it to me. Give it. Out. Yeah, I reckon it'll be 4G, and it'll be a little bit bigger, four-inch screen. Nice. Sweet. Sweet. Now, people, this uh, earlier this month or whenever it was. We, had, we Garth came around and he recorded a few I, iOS app reviews and so forth. So we've got another one. So we're going to go over to Garth and have a listen. And I think he's talking about Overdrive. What is Overdrive? I hear you ask. Well, we're about to find out. Hey, Glenn and Garth here again. Hey, Garth. How you going? G'day, Glenn. Uh, what do you got for us this week? This week we're looking at another free app, Overdrive. Nice. So it is your access point to your local library. Yes. Yeah. It's not a car racing game, unfortunately. No, but there is that one too, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, download e-books or iBooks, whatever you call them, to your, to your iPad. So, yeah, so a lot of the local, a lot of, you know, wherever you're in Australia and, and I think even, you know, across the world, um, there's a, Overdrive is a, a service that a lot of libraries subscribe to that allows the library to offer electronic formatted books and yes. resources. So audio books or EPUB, I, you know, text store audio. Yep. So I've only, you know, only used the audio ones myself, but um, you can download your EPUBs on there as well. So you just pop in your credentials from your own local library hmm. and um, see what they've got available for you. Now, as far as I am aware, because I have heard a bit about this one, as far as I'm aware, they, they lend them to you, you don't just keep them. That's right. So they expire. DRM to within th in an inch of its life, but hey, it works <laughs> still. So, um, and that is actually library dependent as well. I noticed um, for our local library here, you get two weeks. It's a maximum you can choose. Right. But um, logged in with a friend's credentials, not, you know, yeah. quietly on the side. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, at her library, you could do three weeks. Right, so right. it must be something in the licensing that the li particular library pays to mm. Overdrive to, to offer the service. And I also believe that the, not only is it, is it uh, lending restricted or whatever, but it's also uh, title restricted as in um, got the particular library might only be able to lend out three copies. Yeah, that's right. Also for so it, it's, you know, and a lot of people get really annoyed with this sort of stuff because it's, it's making artificial barriers. But it's really like... Um, They've do basically done everything they can to make the experience like you're lending a real book. Yes. From yeah. the library. Like, okay, so we've got the license to provide two copies of this book. 
Yep. So only two people can have it at once. Having said that, you can go in there, you can set, an, a, set a reminder so that it'll automatically notify you when, you know, your copy's available. Just like if you were lending a real book that the library owned. Yeah. So now, so, yeah. so the the the, uh, the app just automatically downloads it to the to your pad. Um. Yeah. You you know you go in there and say you want to want to download this particular one. It's right. not like you subscribed like you might be with a podcast, for example. But it's really easy to manage. And once again, it's all you know voiceover compatible for those of us who use that. Yeah. It's, all right. It's a pretty good, pretty cool little app, I reckon. Good stuff. Yeah. So that's Overdrive, and it's another freebie, Garth. Another freebie. Another freebie. They're coming thick and fast. Oh, thick and fast. Another freebie <laughs> in the iTunes App Store. And uh, thanks, Garth. Another good one, and we'll see you next time. See you later, Glenn. Yeah. So thanks, Garth. He's always, he's always on the hunt for free, for free um, apps. Yes, the freebie. The, the, the freebie. Oh, why not? Oh no, he he, he has reviewed uh, some ones. What he had. I oh, know he did someone's anything. Anything takes his fancy. Anything takes his fancy. Uh, have you have you heard of the Overdrive before, Eric? No, I have not. Yes. Yeah, so I uh, know the Gold Coast Library up here. They've got uh, a lot of titles on electronic uh, loan to be loaned. So yeah. So have a look at that. Will you heard of that? I've heard of a few similar things, not that one specifically. Um, yeah, there are. Uh, biggest problem is I've never heard of anything actually being widespread. Okay. Um, you, you know, like that a few different people will try their own different things so you end up with 30 different Mm. versions of the same app effectively and none of them are integrated well look i'll tell you i I suppose you probably shouldn't do this but anyway who cares but uh look if you know someone like say on the gold coast you just get their library details you log in you just download it load it download it from them you know how how are they going to stop you but anyway have have a go (laughs) now uh not, we don't promote pirating or well, it's not or pirating. It's anything just, that nature. No. It's like you hiring out a library book and then giving it to your friend to read. That's right. And uh, but if it, if that friend's in Which Sydney, it's actually illegal. But anyway, <laughs> no, is it? Oh, okay. Who knows? Who, who, don't try this at home, kiddies. That's right. Now, um, Eric, did you have any Audible this week? Did you listen no. to any or this week? A bit light on the Audible this week. Um, not much. Uh, good stuff's been released, and I didn't have too much time to troll through the 100,000 copies <laughs> and titles. But there's, uh, now there's kids' books, there's yeah. uh, sci fi books. I'll tell you what, some of them are a challenge. I'll, I'll tell you, it says some of them say, you know, six years and up, and I managed to get through them in a couple of months. Yeah. <laughs> well, at, least you don't, at least you don't have to read them, you don't have to come across those big words. Someone says them for you. But um, yeah, audible.com. Go to the aussietechheads.com.au website if you want a free Audible book uh, and uh, join up. You can also subscribe to magazines and journals and newspapers and it'll just be read to you. Yeah, so every day you'll get, for example, you know, New York Times sent to your, um, to your, you know, your iTunes or whatever. You just get downloaded. You sync it to your uh, iPhone or whatever you use. Yeah, right. And someone will read a newspaper out to you. Have you ever listened to one of those? I have. And do they, do you get like a varying of voices, or like for say a girl, the lady, the lady journalist, man journalist? You might get sectional. So, for example, the business news might be held read by somebody. Uh, opinion piece might be read by somebody else. Right. Uh, that sort of thing. Yeah. Just okay. To mix it up a bit. Yeah. There's one section. There's a few things I actually have been listening to in the last couple of weeks. It's called Nostalgia Radio, and it's all the old radio shows like Hitchhiker's Guide and um, Twilight Zone and, and all those... War of the Worlds? Yeah, War of the Worlds. All those old radio features they used to do. They've, uh, they've, some of them are the original unchanged. Some of them, obviously, the recording was pretty bad or they've lost the recording, so they've re-dramatised them. But uh, they're really good. It's quite interesting listening to the old, you know, the old sound effects, the way things were done, yeah, people, you know, very- rattling bags of rice and, <laughs> right. and it's all there on set and he goes and and helen walked through the door <laughs> someone's there with a squeaker yeah, yeah. oh i heard a knock gun, 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 gun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah so uh audible you can get a free audible book and uh go to if you haven't signed up yet go to aussietechs.com you click on the link and uh sign up for a free audible book and uh do us all a favor do yourself a favor, some good quality material, and do us a favor as well. So good on you. All right. Now, do yourself a favor. Molly Meldrum got released from hospital today. Oh, really? Yes. But he's, he's still got some issues, though. Oh, yeah. He, he, look, he's getting better. He's getting improving a lot. Yeah. 
Um, so, so he understands what's happened and all this sort of stuff. Uh, he has no memory of that. You know that always. You know that always happens when yeah. people get accidents and things. They have no memory of the actual accident. Yeah. And that's your brain and your body's way of, of uh, keeping you from not from being traumatized. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he might yeah. never remember what happened. Oh, but, and that, that's, that's fine. But what? So he can remember up until maybe up Christmas. until then, and then waking waking up in the hospital. Yeah. Right. Right. That's so, your, that's just uh, your body and your brain's way of um, protecting you from trauma. So is he still um, like uh, with it? Like me- these memories? Yeah, these long that, long he's memories? As much as he ever was. As much as much as much as um, you know. Look, every day is a different day, obviously, and mm. um, this time next week it will be better than this time last week. Mm. That's good. Now, uh, now a couple of weeks ago, you might have remember we spoke about Parliament. Uh, they've banned the dot info domain. <laughs> Tried. They no, they did. No, they, oh, they, they did, did ban it for a while. They banned it for what three weeks? Yeah, well, they've got, they've turned <laughs> it back on. They decided no, it's not malicious anymore. So <laughs> they've turned it back on. I just thought I'd update you with that. Who is malicious? <laughs> Never mind. Jan is malicious. <laughs> Tall Jan is malicious. Now the uh, look, I've got a little NBN story here. The NBN. Now, if you go to the NBN webpage, now thanks. <laughs> Where's thanks. that phone box? It must be anyone left in Australia. <laughs> That's out the front of your place. <laughs> you're gonna have to you're gonna have to tether your internet to that if you're not careful. <laughs> no, Will's got to have one of those little um, dial-up modem holder things where he's got to put yeah, a receiver yeah. into it. I've got one on the end of my Commodore 64. I've got one so in the shed. An acoustic coupler. <laughs> that That's it. Yeah, I've actually got one. So, um, yeah. oh. Just run a big cable out there, mate. Yeah, you'll be right. I've also got Telstra as a temp. Remember. I know it's a bit off track, but remember years ago, Telstra was one of the first to have mobile uh, mobile email, and they gave you this device, and you'd pick the public phone up, put your phone card in, ring a number, and then hold this this device to the phone, and it'd sit there for like five minutes while it downloaded all your emails to this yeah. device. Yeah, it was, uh, it was like a, uh, what you call a portable acoustic coupler. Yeah, yeah. and they're only like two grand or something. They were great. <laughs> now, um, the NBN, the NBN rollout. Now, Ozzy pointed me in the right direction. He, he's he been to and fro and with NBN as well, some guy that works at NBN. Uh, look, if you want to have a bit of a laugh, you can have – you just follow Ozzy. What did I say before? At uh, O-Z-Z-Y-L-A. Yeah, and um, look, he's been getting into Optus, been getting into M- – not getting into, but, you know, having constructive conversations. Now, the good thing out of the NBN, I suppose, probably good news this week, hopefully. It hasn't been announced yet. But its 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 announcement is uh, imminent early this month. Now they're going to announce a three-year rollout plan. Now whatever that means is anyone's guess. Now, in other sh- words, going to announce who what's who's going to be attached in the next three years. Yes, that's right. Now because if you go to the MBN Co website, we just scroll down the bottom here. You see this here, the three-year plan coming soon. So yep. we can't go into that yet. But it, it, look, it makes sense when you think that the. Uh, Structural separation happened this week between uh, with Telstra, so that's one. That's probably the major hurdle that they've got over now. It should be. It should be. You know. It should be all, all just get in there, all guns blazing. Let's get. Well, it this. should be now that they've got it running. There's no excuse now. This is their last chance. Yeah, and I would imagine that the government. With excuse after excuse after excuse. Yeah. This is the final, final, final hurdle. And I think, and as you would imagine, the government would absolutely be dead set keen. To get this this three year plan, to, if it can be to the majority of the population, to get this three year plan working within or well, within be metro areas, if they want to win an election, yeah, in 2013, they better have 50 percent of all metro areas hooked up. Yep, and they're going to have to have this done within 18 months, really, because that's yes. the next election. Yeah. So, so yeah. look, there's, there's positive news there on the MBN front that maybe the t- the structural separation is what we've all been waiting for. Um, the company is expected to reveal the rollout plan later by the end of the of March. So that's coming. Uh, the eleven dollar billion structural separation deal has gone through. It's passed the ACCC. It's passed through the legislation and all this rubbish, royal assent or whatever you call it. Uh, the the plan will be based on uh, the blah blah blah. It's understood that the MBN could gain access to Telstra infrastructure within a week. The deal provides Telstra to progressively decommission its copper as MBN fibre is rolled out. So goodbye, copper. Gee, they, they'd be able to make a fortune out of bloody reselling that stuff, melt that one down. Uh, well, I'm still there give, for the phone lines. Give, you know what they, I want them to do? I want them to say, look, Eric, you can have a <laughs> copper pit direct to your place. There'll be no one else on it except you. How yeah. fast would my speeds be there? 
<laughs> that'd be, be all right. That'd be all right. Now, though MBN Co. had access to some infrastructure under an interim agreement with Telstra in some areas, this undertaking, the undertaking's green light from the ACCC will allow the final deal to be enforced. The definitive agreement unlocks the full potential of the deal and gives us the certainty we need to finalise our three-year plan and continue with confidence the ongoing acceleration of this monumental project. Oh, spin. Um, Listen to this. They said it just like, like that too. You know what I find funny? <laughs> Mike Quigley said in a yes. statement. When you said um, they've had an interim agreement to access some of the pits, yeah. that's true. Why is it that the pits that they had access to were all in Labor seats? Well, that's the way they wanted it. Because it's the only keys they could find at the time. <laughs> yes. Now, I've got a list here of New South Wales seats. I'll just go run through a couple of them. Um, Armadale, um, Tony Windsor, trader. Um, Auburn, Labor. Austin Mir, Labor. Balgowney, Labor. These are all either active or commencing within this year. This is before the three month, the three year rollout. Bado Bay, Labor. Barella, Labor. Black Mountain, Labor. Blacktown, gee, Liberal, not. <laughs> uh, um, Bly Park, Labor. I'm just, and I'm just in the B's. <laughs> oh, well, you know how they work. In Dapto, no one lives there. Um, <laughs> Gosford. Labor, Homebush, Labor, we're at Kiama, Labor, Kingswood, no one lives there. Not the Kingswood. <laughs> Not the bloody Kingswood. I just missed the scene, the hubcaps. Hey, up to Pimble, oh, <laughs> nowhere to be seen. But Penrith's there. Oh, good on Penrith. Good on you, Penrith. All right, now let, let's let's move on from NBN. I've I was going to say, just quickly, there's yeah. a couple of things. Um, one is there are some places, bleh, some places that are ready for the rollout but they're having to wait until the actual exchanges get power upgrades because a lot of them, the NBN will use a lot more power um, to, to control the system. And the transformers that are currently installed in a lot of the exchanges just aren't powerful enough. So they they physically have to update upgrade the um, the transformers. Yeah, so, the, so there is a handful of places, I haven't got the list in front of me, that are actually ready to go the NBN set everything's in place but they can't actually proceed until they get the transformers upgraded so um also to change are you at will uh i don't know exactly what exchange i'm on here i'm in between three of them so i don't know which one okay, in, name. in between um red bank ipswich and oh what's the other one another one <laughs> red bank well that's not on here uh rest city no, none of them Red Bank is on. Work commenced. Goodner rollout map. Yeah, yeah that's, how, that's the other way. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> that's Ips only because that exchange got flooded, so they decided yeah, to do it. Ipswich is not there, and the other one's not there. What about you, know. Rabina? Glenn? Yeah. Give, me, uh, um, give it to me. No, no good. Well, do you, you know... Must, <laughs> you must be in a Liberal seat. <laughs> yeah, well, probably. I think we are. Oh, yeah, we are. I think we're in Moncrief or something. Is that is that us? Is that us? Oh, no, McPherson. I McPherson. I think. Person. Close. Well, that's not on here either. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, tough, tough titties. But, um, uh, but, but what I reckon is I still stay true to my word, still true to my prediction that the NBN will be on the Gold Coast before the Commonwealth Games. And that is outside <laughs> of this three-year business. So we will definitely have it. Uh, uh, no, not, never going to happen, mate. We will. Um, we won't need also it. Also, too, now. just quickly, the IINet has release their interim um, NBN plans and what they're actually doing for areas that currently aren't broadband designated is they have actually leased a satellite. They have leased uh, 200,000 lines on the satellite. Oh. Um, they, they have speeds of 6 meg down and 1 meg up and that it will they'll be permanently in place until 2015 until the NBN rolls out to those areas. Um, the plans start at $50 per month uh, or 30, $40 per month when bundled with the home phone, and that starts at 20 gig of data, and then it goes up from there. Obviously, um, somewhere they go up to $90. $90 is their um, unlim uh, sorry, $90 is their yeah. Uh, 100 gig, I think it was. I've lost that figures, but um, so basically, yeah, what they've done is they've they've basically bought the price of satellite 
down hugely because up until now there's only been two or three companies that have been doing satellite and they've basically had free reign charge whatever they want um so, they've so got this a is going to be um what you call it stack of uh capacity yeah they basically bought from what i can gather two hundred thousand customers i'm Last time I checked when we used to do Telstra installs was one satellite could only handle 50,000 um, 50, individual traffic packets. So by the sounds of this, they've basically hired four, well, uh, at least four transponders on one satellite or f four individual satellites, one transponder on each one. Um, so they spent a fair bit of money to do that. And their plans are amazingly cheap. I mean, 50 bucks a month for 20 gig of data in an area that traditionally you would be playing, uh, paying, you know, in excess of $100 for, for an equivalent data plan that's much slower. Like normally satellite, you're lucky to get 256 up and maybe a meg and a half down. Mm. So Yeah, it's ter satellite's terrible. So what speed are they going to get? Up around on average of six down and okay. one up. All right. That's, not still that's average. That's yeah. not peak. Yeah, still pass, but not bad. Yeah, that's not well, bad. Well, it's good for satellite. And six, six down, one up. Low. Sorry, Glenn. I was going to say six down, one up. That was just as good as my ADSL 2. Yeah. Um, and It was better than my ADSL 2. <laughs> well, there you go. You should have had and satellite. And relatively <laughs> comparable in price to ADSL 2. Yeah, that's correct. Look, so, all, so this thing, the internet seems to be getting cheaper to more widely spread number of people. So that, that, that can only be good. can only be good. Except for Telstra. Apparently their plans are out of control. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah, well. But um, look, I'll, I'll move it on because we're nearly out of time. But uh, moving on, uh, now T-Box. Yeah, everyone knows I've got the T-Box. It came with the cable and all this sort of jazz. And look, it has received an update through the week. Oh, Yes, woohoo, an update. <laughs> it received an update. Now, what's happening with the T-Box now is it's got a new little uh, section in the um, menu. My Media. And lo and behold, it networks with your computer. Oh, that's beautiful. I'll get <laughs> yes. mine out of the cupboard. Yes. So the uh, My Media is a great new T-Box feature that connects your home media files to your TV. So you can view them in the comfort of your lounge room. You can watch your own videos, create photo slideshows and music playlists and stream them from your computer. You know what I'd like it to do? I'd like it, the T-Box to plug into a back of one of my monitors here and watch T-Box on my screen. Can it do that? You can do that. Yeah, why not? Yeah, you just have to get some the adapters, wouldn't you? Doesn't the T-Box have composite and yeah. DVI? Yeah, it's got HDMI. So you oh, just, HDMI, yeah. Yeah, you just get a monitor with HDMI. Or a composite to VGA adapter. I've got, I've got, H, I've got HDMI. Yeah. So I could just plug it in here, yep. plug the cable into it, and... Away you go. Off. So, and not only will this will the, will the new feature stream from your from your machine from your Windows PC, but it'll also you can also chuck in a USB key into it as well. Beautiful. With your files. Finally. Or yeah. or could you put you could you plug in just uh, like a portable hard drive? Yes. Yep. Yes, you can do that as well. Probably only up to I'm guessing it's probably only up to 100 and 250 gig. Most of those things only support up to. Up right. to that size. So look, it's not it's not um, as, as oh, what's what's the word? It's probably it's easy to do. It's not as maybe as open as what you'd like, but look, it's still it's still it's doable. Just, it's still it's doable. Because what happens is um, you've got to put it, it runs through the as far as I know it runs like um, using this DNLA sort of stuff apparently or something like that. So so you've got to put all the media you want to be able to access on the T box. You've got to have it inside you know your my doc or your or your or your Windows Media Center folder. So you know yeah. I think you can you can change a folder into a Media Center folder, a, a Media Player folder. Yeah. So but anyway, there's instructions on the T box. Uh, look, it's dead set easy. I've just, I, I've, I've chucked a movie into the, you know, my documents, videos, and away you go. You can drag your movie from another folder into the playlist of the uh, media player on the PC, go out into the lounge room where your T-Box is, and then there it is. It's in there. That's good. So works good. with Windows 7. It doesn't mention Vista, but, hey, that's the, that's the Vista machine I was working on through the week. It works on Vista as well. So what about Mac? No. No, because it's got to work. It needs the Windows Media Player. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, with you. I'm with you. So, so yeah, so that's good. That's good. So, 
tea box. You're getting better. You're getting better. I'm liking it. Oh, and also, be, and by the way, because my TV ran out of HDMI slots and stuff. You got a switch. I got a switch. Got a switch. Yeah. Seven dollars. Yeah. Seven dollars. Because that's what you want to do. You want to get up and go what and change an analog switch. Dollars for my switch. <laughs> what did you pay for your switch? Hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah. Well. <laughs> You, or a HDMI switch, a five oh, yeah. HDMI switch. Well, I got do a, that again. I got a four port automatic switcher. I don't know how that works, but automatic switcher, and um, it Where yes. Did you get that from? No, Honkers. What eBay? Yeah. <laughs> Seven bucks came in a week. You mean there's you mean there's other places you can buy things? <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm, yes. I'm willing to guess that that's going to last you all of about a month. No, nah, it'll be right. It's, it'll and for seven dollars, you buy another one, well, and then at right. ten months, you're still only half the price of yours. Well, yeah, if, it, if, if if I have two that fail, I'll buy a box of them, and still won't be paying 150 bucks. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, so you're making fun of me now. Move so, along, yeah. nothing to see here. So well, Actually, just quickly, speaking of, I don't have the story. It just it just reminded me. Um, did you guys hear? Wow, went in the receivership. No. Who's wow? Wow. Our sight and Is, sound. Who what? I think they're a Queensland town. thing. They're basically no, they've got 15 stores Australia wide. They're predom- they got uh, like nine in Queensland, but they're basically a competitor to JB things like that. Um, and for the sake of 20 million dollars, they've gone into receivership. So that'll be interesting. For the sake of 20 million, make it <laughs> well, sound make it sound so uh, um, minuscule. If you, if you read the story, it actually is because like 18 of that 20 million is owed to a company that went broke. So, <laughs> oh, well. it, uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but that, that's just a quick update. I want to keep an eye on that because it should be a really good time to start buying things cheaply. So the Broncos are looking for a new sponsor. Yes. Yep. Cool. That wasn't the, they, were, they weren't the uh, debtor, were they, or the creditor, or whatever? <laughs> Probably yeah, were. Well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, what else is going on? I've got one, another little Android story here quickly before we, um, before we wrap up a bit. Uh, Android Jelly Bean coming in November. Android 5 to, arri- to arrive just about one year after Ice Cream Sandwich. Android, Android 5 a Jelly Bean looks set for release in November. Google's keeping its cards close to its chest on, on what will be packed into Android, Android 5. But how is this? This could be the killer. It's expected that Jelly Bean tablets will be able to dual boot between Windows 8 and Android 5. There interesting. You know. Very, mm. very interesting. You'll have two operating systems that crash. That's brilliant. So you get, so you get the pay for a Windows license <laughs> as well. Yay. Yeah, yay. You, <laughs> look, you haven't given me a no. fee. Just give me a bill for 200 bucks. Look, you know that, what it is. It wasn't... It's got nothing to do with that. It'll be like a Pez dispenser. You just flip the top open and you can just shake a couple of jelly beans out. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> now, uh, That'd be much more useful. It should do that. <laughs> did you guys have any other stories? Uh, Eric, did you have any stories? Did you finished I'm, yours? Uh, I think you finished yours. Yeah, I've done I, I got a, I got a couple of quickies. Yeah. Um, given, well, we're a day out, but uh, yesterday was obviously the leap day. And uh, if you're on a... Um, what do they call it? If you're on a contract for your work, yeah. um, so you don't get paid per the hour, you get paid, you know, set rate. You basically worked yesterday for free. Um, because you get paid because, for the month. So yeah, because because yeah. you didn't get basically get paid to work yesterday, so sucked into that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll teach you to be on, on contract. <laughs> yeah, that'll learn you. Um, also, quickly the. What's his name? Um, the Twitter co-founder. Um, uh, what's his name? Oh, for crying out loud. What's his yeah. name? I've right. got it written right in front of me. I know who you're talking about. Um, funny looking dude. Evan someone. Yeah. I've got his name right in front of me. Do you think I can find it? But basically he said that um, on average, 500 million users of Twitter spend at least 12 hours a day using the service. What? That's, that's crazy. That's, but that's, yeah, not, that's not 100% focal attention. You know, there's one person that I follow on Twitter and, and Google Plus <laughs> that does just that, and um, I won't mention names, but all I can say is stop it. <laughs> stop um, it now. Stone. You'll go Stone. blind. Stone, someone? But um, 
Yeah, oh, he basically for said real, that he'd be another one. He said, you know, as much as I want people to use the service, I don't want people sitting on there for, for 12 <laughs> hours at a time. You know, not 500 million people of the world's population is sitting on their ass for 12 hours using the service. Yeah. So that's just not right, you know. Oh, yes. And remember the other week they were saying that Australia's productivity has dipped below some ridiculous number. And I reckon that's since the advent of Facebook and Twitter in about 2007. Well, why don't why don't uh, why don't the employers block access to it? A lot of them have, but but in the beginning they didn't know what the hell was going on. But a lot of them do block it now. Mm. Some, I mean, most companies, at least most tech savvy companies, actually hire um, online marketers or you know social networking marketeers. That's their job to sit in front of the computer and monitor Facebook, monitor Twitter, monitor um, dig, monitor all these sites so that if you know. You have a complaint, for example, you do it with Dodo. They're a classic example. If you do hashtag or at Dodo or hashtag Dodo, as soon as you post a question within an hour, you'll get a response. Mm. So there are actually um, people out there who that's their job is to monitor those networks. But you're right for the rest of the uh, for the rest of the employees. I don't, you know, it's probably not necessarily. Now, yeah, just before we go, Glenn, I've just put in the Google Hangout chat here. Yes. A yes. Link. Click that. It's the HP Spectre. The Envy, a HP a Envy Spectre 14. It is a beautiful machine. You have a look at that. You have a look. At, and it's, and, oh, mate, it, I swear to God, you'd think it was a MacBook. They've really got their act together on that. Click on that big oh, picture yeah. there, on the picture itself. It'll pop up for you. Look at that. Hey, nice, nice. That is a beautiful looks. machine. Yeah, that looks nice. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? That looks nice. Do you know? Now, you can. I'll tell you what it does. I just read about this a minute ago. It does. It does this. It does. Uh, la, 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 la. A glass top ultrabook and a home projector that screens 3D movies on a blank wall. Oh wow. Hmm. That's pretty good. I was, I was nice. reading about That's that nice. earlier, actually. And I didn't get a chance to, to read fully, but it looks really neat. That's a beautiful machine. Yeah, I'm tempted to get that, seriously. It's yeah. pretty pricey. How much? Uh, it's only two centimetres thin, weighs 1.8 kilos, 14-inch screen, and uh, it's only got 128 gigabit solid-state storage, and it's $1,900. Pretty pricey, but... Yeah. Uh, Nice, what, nice what's a MacBook cost around about that? Uh, uh, MacBook uh, about fifteen hundred. Hmm. And oh, I'll tell you a little secret too, by the way. Uh, someone, <laughs> some, someone I know in this house bought a MacBook Pro. <laughs> and I'll tell Who? you, Q. you? No, not, you? no, not me. <laughs> not me. I've got enough crap. So uh, yeah, I, w I would never be allowed to buy it. But obviously, she's allowed. <laughs> Woo, she's allowed. Oh, she. But Kim Wharton bought a. MacBook Pro. Yeah, yeah, because I because I wouldn't fix her IBM machine. <laughs> <laughs> so it's your fault. Yeah, so she has stuff. The thirteen inch. The thirteen inch. Oh god, I don't know. I, don't, I, I just looked at it after it was unpacked. I haven't even looked. It's only this week. So, but I look. I tell you, I did use it the other night, and I will tell you what I like. Do you know what I like? That there's things I don't like about it, but do you know what I liked most about it? The and it's, I used. Hey. It just works. Well, no, yes, that's right. But what I liked. The most about it was the backlit keys. Oh, beautiful. Mm. Yeah, oh, I could use it in the dark. In the bed, yeah. Yeah, I loved it. You press a button and off you go. I loved it. So my next laptop I buy, and hopefully some PC manufacturer make them with backlit keys. Yeah, because a lot of them do. My Dell make them backlit yep, keys. I need it. This, this HP Spectre has backlit keys. Yeah, that's some what made me think started, of it. Some of them started making a backlit keyboard, but they still had solid keys in them. And I sort of went, oh, hang on, that's probably not a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> so there were a few of those. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so anyway, so now the uh, in this house, the Macs are starting to rival the PCs. Yeah. I don't well, know they're already, they're already, they've already overtaken this house. But, any, just, but, but DT's just put in the chat room, um, run, he runs, he's going to run the Windows <laughs> on a Mac. No. And um, that's what I did, but I, li I actually like the... Um, look, I, look, I still... Laptop. Operating system. Look, I know, I know, people don't agree with me, and they probably don't like what I say. But as I still think that for me, for me, okay, for me personally, a Mac uh, or the iPad or whatever it is is really just an extension to the internet. I wouldn't, I can't do, I don't do anything other than internet on these things. 
Right. So um, to me, you know, PCs. Look, I'm doing this streaming you're, you're now. Working so. All your work on a PC. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And I mean, we for what we use, things like Vid Blaster, for example, things like that require a PC. You I, can't you know, do them. Yeah, look, I really wish Vid Blaster came out with a Mac version. It'd be so sweet. If they did that, but they're not going to. They can't do it. You read through the forums and. Um, Oh, I can't think of his name. The guy who designed it um, actually says he can't physically do it, but Mac software doesn't allow the implementation of some of the things he tries, he wants to do. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm. but anyway, yeah. Um, so, um, but that's good. But, but oh, geez, it's a nice little machine. Like, oh, oh, you know what it, I'd like to have if I keep my MacBook Pro to run the Mac because I like the Mac OS for the movies and the Garage Band and all that sort of stuff, and then get one of these HP Spectres as when as a Windows laptop. Oh, then I'd have the best yeah. of both worlds. Yeah, <laughs> that Spectre looks pretty nice, doesn't it? Um, um, how are we running for time? Are we quite long, or have I got time for a couple of quick stories? Yeah, a couple of quick. I've got one more, but yeah, make them fast. We're, we're over. Um, just quickly speaking of laptops, a uh, laptop was stolen from NASA last year, which contained the, all the command codes used to control the International Space Station. Cool. Uh, the laptop, which was not encrypted, was among do- dozens of mobile devices stolen in recent years that contained sensitive information. So uh, if you see a laptop out there and you press Control or Delete and the space station falls out of the sky, NASA want their laptop back. Um, <laughs> But basically they're saying that in 2011, 150 NASA employees either left, or basically left, laptops, USB, mobile phones, whatever, laying around in restaurants. <laughs> right. That's hopeless, isn't it? Is it? That's hopeless. <laughs> and none, nothing is encrypted, which is, you know, the yeah. best part about it all. That's hopeless. That's hopeless. Um, and also quickly, if you go to the Pirate Bay anymore, yep. you won't find torrents. Magnets. They're no longer doing torrents. What a oh. surprise. I think well, they, they've been keeping an eye on the Kim.com news. <laughs> no, no. The good news is they're still doing magnets. What's the difference between a magnet and a torrent? Nothing really except that Called different. The, um, they physically had to host the torrent file on their servers. So it, not the not the downloaded file, but the actual torrent file that told it where to go, what it was going to be, all that sort of stuff. They physically had to host that. These magnet links are all user-hosted, so everybody who has the file, who is sharing the file, regardless of what it is, now shares a magnet file as well. So there'll still be a search, there'll still be a repository for going there to find your files, um, but they won't physically be hosting anything there anymore. Hmm. Still illegal, but maybe they're not going to get pinged as much for it. File sharing and peer to peer is not illegal. Well, for, it's only if you what you do with yeah. it can be. Yes, okay. You know, and the other thing with the magnet links is they're much more secure and much harder to track. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and did you have a, another one, Will? Um, no. Okay. Oh, yeah, actually, I did. There's, um, basically, wireless we know isn't great it's flaky at the best of times but there's these uh, guys and scientists in germany who have decided that they um, are going to put wireless braking systems in planes trains no probably not planes well yeah they have brakes um <laughs> bikes cars whatever they're basically the way they've designed it is they have these systems that are fully self-repairing and things like that. And they're much quicker um, than a hydraulic system because they work in 250 milliseconds. So they're actually more efficient. They have a reliable reliability weight, reliability rate of 99.9999999997%. Oh, um, last that seven. <laughs> which actually makes them about 10% more reliable than common than most effective current braking system. So even though they'll be fully wireless, fully independent, completely untethered, completely electronically controlled, it's going to be more reliable until somebody figures out what frequency they run on. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe it might be left in some laptop that's unencrypted that's left at the You can see, oh look, there's tip. a Wi-Fi hotspot here. I'll just log into that. Oh, yeah. oh no, my Woo. phone's crashed. Woo. <laughs> now, my last story of the week this week is Twitter partners with Datasift to unlock the tweet archive. Yes, the tweet archive. 
Firms can search tweets back to January 2010 in order to plan marketing campaigns, target influential influential users, or even try to predict, predict certain events. Until today, only the previous 30 days of tweets were available for companies to search. Regular users can access posts from the past seven days. UK-based DataSift is the first company to offer the archives. Existing customers will be able to access historical tweets from today, the company said. No one has done this before. Good on them. Data Shift's marketing managers told uh, the newspaper. It's a brand new service that we're building online. It's a massive technology challenge because of the amount of data that is pumped out every single day. He said the company takes in roughly 250 million tweets every 24 hours, all of which are analysed for content. My goodness. Such as whether they were said in a positive or negative tone. They should have... They're gonna, the next thing that's going to come out is like a, um, like, a, like a negative Twitter tone day or something. Stuff everyone up. <laughs> That that two hundred and fifty million tweets they analyze is only the ones that that are fit within their particular search criteria they're looking for too. So could you imagine how many tweets there actually are, given that there's five hundred million Twitters at any one time on there for twelve hours a day? Can you imagine how many tweets actually yeah. fly around the world every couple every second? It's mad, isn't it? The software will also log data location and social media influence based in part of existing influence monitoring service. Now, I'll say that again. That didn't make sense. The software <laughs> will also log location data and social media influence based. That still didn't make sense. No, just started. <laughs> no. Right, uh, final story. Uh, final pri- story private accounts me. and tweets that have been deleted will not be indexed on the site. All right. Final story for me. Yep. Apple is now worth more than Poland, oh. Belgium, Sweden, Saudi Arabia, and Taiwan, and it is making profits of $1 billion per week. Good night, all. All right, and on that, <laughs> Eric's Eric's out of here. <laughs> he's happy with his 500 billion. Po- he's ahead of Apple and, and Poland and Germany, and don't mention the wall. All right, so that's it. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Uh, don't forget, aussietechheads.com.au. There's a forum there. Uh, I'd like to see a bit more activity. I know Facebook and Twitter's all taken over now. Forum's a bit gone and done and dusted. But look, if you've got a question, I still get in there and monitor it. So if you've got a question, jump in there and, we'll, and we'll, oh, I'll try and answer it at least. Uh, the video is at youtube.com forward slash the secret hub for the video of every show that we do. And also the audio it can be listened to on the radio.thesecrethub.com. If you're just on your little iPhone out in the car somewhere, you don't want to stream the video, just stream the audio. It doesn't take as much bandwidth. Radio.thesecrethub.com. And, and that's up. 24 7 regardless of whether we're streaming or not and so yeah so if you're not if we're not streaming live you'll probably get you'll get into a replay of one of the other shows through the week uh maybe we're trying to get eric's my people are talking to eric's people and these people (laughs) have got to talk to my people and we're trying to get chewing the fat on the radio as well but I um, think my people tell you to get stuffed. <laughs> they, they, I think they, his people couldn't be bothered doing all the editing required. <laughs> yeah. My know. people are lazy and I don't blame them. <laughs> but anyway, uh, thanks to uh, Brad and uh, techwebcast.info for the, uh, the the pre-show show or the pre-show before our show uh, at every Thursday night at 7 o'clock Queensland time. We're on at about 730 uh, Queensland time every Thursday night if you want to catch us live. We're also obviously on the iTunes as a podcast and as the video and all any way else you want to get us. Uh, you watch the YouTube, chuck that up on your boxy, watch it in the lounge room, watch it on your iPad, whatever you want to do. Whatever, however you Don't forget Talk Back Tech on Tuesday nights. Tuesday nights, Talk Back Tech when Will's well and he's got internet. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, don't forget, everyone, the paper twice a day, paper.aussietechheads.com.au. And that's about it. If you want to call into the show live, call us on Skype, Aussie Tech Heads. Uh, we're always willing to take a call. If I see the thing buzzing, it probably buzzes after the time I don't see it. So we've got to get a <laughs> noise or something for it. But anyway, uh, that's all we have for you this week. Thank you, Eric, and thank you, Will. See you no worries, guys. Thank, thank you. Thank you. And thank you to you. And we'll see you next week for episode 280. Until then, don't forget the footy tipping. Bye for now.